Now that many of us know that um, the Freemasons' so-called god is uh, Apollyon, the beast from the pit, um, whose other name, which has been a secret it seems, is Helios, which is Greek and uh, means the sun. Well, basically, it means they named the sun after him. And the other planets have also been named after Nephilim giants. And now, of course, I understand, and I hope you also understand, what God meant in the Bible when he said, These people exalt themselves even unto heaven. They've had the cheek to call the planets of the solar system after themselves. For instance, the planet Jupiter, um, that's the name of a Roman uh, god, which was purloined from the Greeks, which actually happens to be Zeus. So, planet Jupiter can also be called planet Zeus, and his son, Helios, is the sun. Is, uh, you know, the sun's <laughs> been named after him. So we've got Zeus and we've got uh, Helios in the solar system and of course uh, everything revolves around the Helios, the sun, Apollyon, the beast from the pit. Now of course we know this. Now there's a certain implication which I thought of which is dire uh, concerning its consequences. You may, at some stage, have seen stuff on TV concerning the Persians and um, the invasion of, uh, basically, all of the Eastern world by uh, Alexander the Great, another uh, well-known Greek. Nephilim. There's no way he was human. There's just no way. Um, and you'll have noticed that the people there, I mean, I saw one program where, where a Persian guy said, if Alexander the Great were alive today, he would kill him. <laughs> Not he would try, <laughs> he would actually kill him. He hates him so much. Now, let's just look now at, at the consequences and the ramifications of a so-called Greek, Greek, this is the operative word now, uh, so-called God, um, called Apollyon, called Helios, also known as Abaddon. Imagine that, a Greek God ruling over the whole of Islam. Everyone who is a Muslim suddenly to be told that their most ancient and dreaded foe, the Greeks, have a god called Helios and they now have to worship him. Can you honestly see uh, for instance, the people of Turkey um, worshipping a Greek. Uh, hasn't there been a, a campaign over many years to keep Greece and Turkey as so-called traditional rivals, especially by the British government, who treat the rivalry between the peoples of those two, two countries like the Oxford and Cambridge boat race? Traditional rivals. And of course, the I'm Greek myself now, um, so uh, don't get me wrong when I say this. The Greeks are always portrayed as the victims of um, Turkish aggression. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of bravado in Turkish politics, um, and there's a lot of diplomacy in, uh, in Greek politics. But of course, we're not talking about Greeks and Turks here, we're talking about Nephilim, and we're talking about Tez, and we're talking about Freemasonry, Satanism the worship of Helios. So, I will put it this way, the Greek Freemasons and the Turkish Freemasons know full well that at the end of the day everyone is going to be told you will worship a Greek God. I foresee um, rioting the likes of which has never been seen on the face of this earth. I cannot possibly see how people with um, such devout beliefs in their Muslim faith can be told that they will now have to worship a Greek god. But none the same, a Greek. Um, Nostradamus said that the, the most of this, uh, this end times war would happen within that region, um, in North Africa, um, and Persia, etc., and, and touching parts of, um, of Europe. 
And I believe that Nostradamus was a born again Christian, Holy Spirit filled and being spoken to by the Spirit. Um, I can see the most awful and dreadful war kicking off in that area. And so I think specifically, um, uh, believe it or not, for that reason um, in itself is enough to stir up the um, uh, anger and, uh, and, and, and uh, national uh, pride, immense national pride in those areas if they were told they would have to worship a Greek god. Add whatever name you want on the end. in the end, the beginning is Greek. And I've been in parts of Turkey and I've seen that a lot of shops and stuff out there are actually named after Greek gods and no one seems to have noticed. There's um, Greek uh, symbolism uh, all over the place and shops out there calling themselves after Greek gods. Why? Why? Uh, you will not go to Greece and see um, a shop run by a Greek named after Allah. You just will not see that at all, or from anything from Turkish mythology, nothing, zero. So why um, are the uh, Greek Masonic symbolisms um, scattered all over places uh, in Turkey and, uh, and, and also um, anywhere else where they have interests? It doesn't make sense, does it? You don't have two opposing sides who use the same signs and symbols and forego their own national pride, etc. To um, bolster the name of something which helps the so called traditional um, uh, rival um, build up their tourism trade and so forth. No. Um, Helios um, caused a lot of trouble uh, when he was here before. He's the beast who once was, now is not, and yet will be. And when he comes back, um, everyone's going to find out that he's not called the destroyer for nothing. But don't worry, Jesus is hot on his heels. And uh, if Apollyon, Helios, thinks he can destroy, you wait and see what Jesus can do.